having examined the difference between our experience and our interpretation of our experience, let's turn our attention now to the single distinction that I find most helpful for most people. And that is learning to move from a reactive mind state to a responsive mind state. I cannot uh, emphasize sufficiently what a difference this can make in your life. A reactive mind state comes from the mind responding from a, an experience in our lives being pleasant or unpleasant. If it's pleasant, oh, well, I like this, I want this, I want more of this, I want to justify that I'm getting this pleasant experience, and so forth. So we move towards the experience simply because it's pleasant. And by pleasant, I mean it's, it's praise, or it's like bringing certain privileges with it, or it's uh, very uh, uh, reassuring, it makes us feel safe or important or loved or whatever it may be. It's a pleasant experience, a feeling tone of pleasantness. And the pleasantness can be in this moment or anticipated future moment or uh, tying into the past in some way. Just as we respond to the positive with a reactive mind, so we can respond to a negative feeling in a moment's experience with a reactive mind. A negative feeling is when it's something that we don't want to be happening to us. We don't, we don't want this coming towards us. We don't want to be stuck in some situation, whether it's sitting on the tarmac at an airport or whether it is uh, being uh, 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 under uh, a kind of criticism for something we've done or a, an imagined future that's gonna happen that we think is unpleasant and we get really reactive. The mind gets really reactive to this because it's, it's seeing everything from the lens of pleasant and unpleasant. This feeling tone uh, uh, defines so much of our experience and you can only know this by watching, bringing your mindfulness into moment to moment and seeing how affected you are by whether it's pleasant or unpleasant, whether you're driving your car, you're talking to your friend on the phone, you're at work, you're actually watching news on, on the internet or the television. Just notice over and over again what a difference pleasant and unpleasant makes in your mood and in your interpretations and in the thoughts you have, the, the body's experience, it's really astounding, this difference. It's one of the fundamental distinctions in mindfulness practice. That's what we learn on mindfulness retreats is to make this distinction. Now, what's the choice? Instead of being in a reactive mind state based on pleasant or unpleasant, we move to a responsive mind state. A responsive mind state does not base its, its uh, uh, relationship on in moment's experience of any kind as to whether it's pleasant or unpleasant. It's aware of whether it's pleasant or unpleasant and how that's affecting the nervous system and the thoughts that are occurring in the mind and what's it being felt in the body. But its reference is our values, what you really care about. What really matters to you in this situation? Who do you want to be in this situation? You are being unfairly criticized by a brother or a sister. And if it's hurtful to you, but do you really want to be a person that hurts back? Is that really your values? It doesn't mean that you don't want to stand up for yourself, but would you really choose to have as a goal to hurt back because you've been hurt? The reactive mind state will choose that just does it. It's like instantaneous. That's why the mindfulness becomes a difference. It becomes the pause in between what happens to us in some sort of a stimulant coming towards us or even generated within us and then what we do. So a responsive mind state has wisdom in it and it has compassion in it. We are being the kind of person we want to be. We have to train 
having a responsive mind. We have to train it. It is not easy. It's not automatic. But the mind really will uh, allow itself to be trained in this. We use mindfulness to see over and over again what's reactive and what's responsive. We see clearly that the reactive state leads to more confusion of mind, not clarity. It leads to more suffering, more tension between others and ourselves or within ourselves. And we see that a, a responsive mind state has a kind of grounding. We feel authentic. We feel as though we're being true to ourselves. And we feel as though we've got choice. This person's being a jerk. What's the appropriate response? I wish to do the appropriate response. Sometimes that's being very firm back and naming what's going on. But other times it's going, oh, they must really be upset about something. This is not about me. This, this, all this anger coming towards me is just not appropriate. So something's off in them. I am not going to get off just because they're off. And then you don't make an enemy. Then you, in fact, may help someone in a time when they really need for someone to say to them, hey, are you okay? This is the response. A responsive mind knows what really matters and lives that as best it's able. Not perfectly. You'll go crazy if you try to be perfect. But you are over and over again, you're training the mind. You're creating a new habit of mind. And that's the habit of a responsive mind. The difference is night and day. One is, is disempowering this reactive mind state. The empowering mind state is the responsive mind. Who would not choose that? See this for yourself with your mindfulness. It will take you a few days to really watch this, and then it will become clear what is the wise choice.